Since the beginning of time, scientific evidence has replaced religious belief, and never the other way around. As more scientific information becomes available, religion seems increasingly primitive or useless. If the trend of scientific discovery continues, will religion eventually become obsolete? We can't prove that God exists, at least scientifically. I would argue that just because religious beliefs aren't real, meaning empirically observable, doesn't mean that they're not important. They allow us to understand the world in simpler terms and even explain parts of life that science has failed to elucidate. This notion that religious faith, something quasi-fictional, almost imaginary, can have value is quite difficult to accept. Personally, I like to think of the value of religion as a mathematical analogy. Keep in mind that I'm a practicing Jew, so I clearly have a bias. I only ask you to consider the importance of religious thought whether or not you engage in it yourself. Our story begins in 1637, when René Descartes coined the term imaginary number. Yes, this is the I think therefore I am Descartes, the creator of hyperbolic doubt and methodological skepticism. As you can imagine, Descartes really didn't like imaginary numbers. In fact, his use of the epithet imaginary, a word we still use today, was a derogatory remark. The imaginary unit I is defined by its property, I squared equals negative one. During the 16th and 17th centuries, imaginary numbers were seen as useless because, as Descartes deduced, they couldn't exist. Descartes' predecessor said that working with imaginary numbers was mental torture. It is subtle as it would be useless. He had a point. Imaginary numbers can't exist. They're not real. You can't take a square root of a negative number. But this doesn't mean that they're not important. Some mathematicians, like Raphael Bombelli, strongly believed in the use of complex numbers. He suggested that imaginary numbers could be used to get real answers. And so they did. As time progressed, so did the understanding and use of imaginary numbers. Today, computer scientists, civil, mechanical, and electrical engineers, cartographers, and quantum mechanics use imaginary numbers daily. Calculus students solve differential equations in the domain of complex numbers because using real numbers has infinitesimal benefits. Imaginary numbers were the gateway to modern civilization. They've allowed us to manufacture electronics, design buildings and bridges that can support the colossal weight of cars, which are constantly running complex equations behind dashboards in order to function. Complex numbers allow developers to create Angry Birds and Apple to create iPhones. The world we know today is a product of the use of I. It's ludicrous to think that something imaginary is responsible for modern day technology. That the foundation of our society are based on equations that aren't even real. But this is our reality. Just because complex numbers don't really exist doesn't mean they don't serve a purpose that is transformative. They simplify equations that would be too complicated to solve otherwise. They are the underlying imaginary sine and cosine waves that go unseen in electrical circuits and graphic design. As one mathematician put it, the shortest path between two truths in the real domain passes through the complex domain. I is a simplifier, the shortest path between two truths. Imaginary numbers are comparable to the Tanakh in this way. The myths and legends of Torah, prophets, and writings aren't real. We can't prove the existence of God or the veracity of biblical writings because we lack scientific evidence, that is, empirically observable facts. In fact, the inability to prove this is the basis of faith itself. As a student once asked, if we could prove the existence of God, what would we need faith for? If I is the book of Genesis, then the complex plane is Judaism. My faith my belief in God and in the texts and writings of the Midrash and Talmud is the shortest path between two truths. It's by passing through the imaginary domain. Torah provides a simple explanation for complicated problems. Parsha Bereshit tells us that God creates man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God formed Adam, Adam, from the earth, Adama. God fashioned soul from soil. Torah tells us that at one point in time, there were no humans, and later, there were. Scientific evidence very much supports this statement, but tends to belie the actual stories of how humans came to be. If creation were a differential equation, this would be the point when we'd use imaginary numbers to lessen the work, but still get a real answer. This is when parents teach their children about how God created the earth, everything from let there be light to the tree of life. These myths might very well be imaginary, not meant to be taken literally, 
or just poetry. Many argue that the real explanation for why humans exist and why we're the most cognitively advanced species on Earth is that we are the product of evolution, natural selection, biased mutation, and genetic drift. They point out that Earth and all of life couldn't have possibly been created in a mere week, and that man couldn't have been created out of dust. Their arguments echo those of Descartes, who said that imaginary numbers produce false solutions. But Descartes was wrong. Imaginary numbers can produce real solutions, much like how biblical stories can produce very real understandings of the world. You don't need to teach toddlers about the Proterozoic Eon, DNA sequencing, or phylogenetic systematics for them to fathom the current status of the world. It's not feasible. Biblical texts provide different explanations that, while maybe are imaginary, leave us with the same understanding. Humans exist on Earth. Calculus students use complex numbers like I use the story of creation. Neither are real, but they both yield a very real answer. Religious texts give us insight to the unknown. They allow us to think thoughts unthinkable otherwise. A verse in the book of Ecclesiastes comforts an old lady on her deathbed. And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Scientific findings can't soothe the old woman in her last days of life. Hard science tells us very little about life after death or the lack thereof. 